What's your first thought when you saw that Messi is no longer going to play for Barcelona? Dude, that's crazy. It's like this man has been signed to Barca since he was like, what, 14, 13? Mm -hmm. Since he was young, bro. He's been playing for two decades. 21 years. It's like seeing Kobe without him being associated with the Lakers. You know what I mean? And to establishing Barca into what it is today, like he put Barca on the map, bro. Okay, well, he didn't put Barca, Barca on the map. On the Barca map was already now. a big club. But, but I'm a lot. A lot of fans nowadays, bro, are Barca fans just because of his Cause skill. Because of Messi. Because yeah. of Messi. That Jordan comparison, but I think the best one would be Kobe. Because LeBron's left a bunch of times, but Kobe staying with the Lakers for like 16 years and then going to play somewhere else, bro. That'd yeah, be crazy. That's crazy. Um, a lot of there's a lot of speculation about where he might go to next. And um, before we get into that, I just want to say they signed. Aguero to Barcelona just because of Messi because of Messi and so now him not being there it's like oh shit Aguero's that's like, what I'm saying like because that's one of Messi's best friends like uh, Ser- I was telling you the other day Sergio Aguero's his son is Messi is the godfather you know like these guys they played together in three different world cups they've just been part of so many teams Copa Americas in Argentina yeah. and um he left Manchester City at Huero to join Barcelona just to play with Messi, to end his career with Messi. Yeah. And then they signed Memphis Depay, and he wanted to go there just to play with Messi. And then now kind of leaves them. Yeah, the rug them. was just pulled, and he's ending his career just playing in Barca, but no Messi. I don't know where I want to see Messi play next, because one, with Manchester City would be dope because of uh, Muri, uh, what's his name? Guardiola. The Guardiola like touch system that they have in Manchester City yeah. right now. So he's going to go back to playing in the same system, which he's not going to have any problems. Yeah. So that's why I see him going to uh, Manchester City more just because of that. Man, if he goes back to Eng- if he goes to England, though, it's like a different style, you know, like Spanish. There's a Spanish style and then there's the English, English style. style. Mm-hmm. A lot, I mean, there's a lot of top players in, in the in, in the English league too. So you got to think about that too. Like how how would he deal in that league? It's more physical. It's more definitely physical. It's definitely way more physical to play in England. I think. Um, I mean, he, he's gonna do great in either one, just because he's messy. Messi's gonna yeah. be messy, but he's also older though. He's 36. He's not the same guy. Like if this was yeah. 2010, actually, this doesn't. I feel like it's not even a big deal. Just it's more of a big deal that he's leaving the club because he has a, so much yeah. history. Not as like he's going to have the biggest impact because he's still going to be great. But yeah. I don't expect him a year from now when he's 37 to be dominating in this kind of level. Like even then mm-hmm. now, like he has his runs, but half of the time he's just walking around the pitch because he's older. I mean, yeah. 36, he's saving his energy for the big runs. Yeah. I just don't think it's going to be that much of a... Ronaldo's doing the same thing. I mean, he left his club too, mm-hmm. you know, not that long just ago. Just chasing goals and chasing championships. Yeah. I mean, Messi right now, he has what, like six... Um, Golden, Golden yeah, yeah. The, the golden balls. So he's like number one. I mean, a lot of people, who do you think is number one? Like between Messi or like Ronaldo. So for the long, okay. I'm, I'm a big Ronaldo fan. Yeah. <laughs> like I think he's badass, but like I was telling you, I don't know if I told him in the podcast, but I just think Messi, he's the best player of all time. Like Messi, he's better than Pelé. He's better than Maradona. And even though Ronaldo's amazing and I think Ronaldo's the second best ever, but yeah. Whenever Messi would touch the ball, you would get scared or you would get excited. Like, oh, shit, this was about to do something. Yeah. And I didn't get the same feeling with Ronaldo. Like, Ronaldo will get it. You know he's going to do a couple, like, little scissor dribbles. Yeah. And maybe pass it to a teammate, like, in a cool way or something. But when Messi touched the ball, you're like, oh, shit. shit. Who's going to be running behind the defender? Who, is he going to juke, like, seven dudes yeah, to yeah. score? So that's that's why I always believed uh, Messi was a little better. And, of course, he's more goals, more assists. Yeah, he stayed in one club the whole time, but... I mean, he kind of made that club what it, what is, it is. is today. I mean, and yeah, like just seeing him carrying that legacy, you know, from all the past players like Ronaldinho era, like my brother's era, like that he grew up watching Barca and then him coming into his own and making the club to what it is today. It's just cool. But I just think it's it's sad that like he doesn't even get like a farewell game or something like that. I know. They should have kind of announced it last season, huh? They, they're they like a billion dollars in debt. So Barcelona, like their management as a club, as a franchise, as a club, whatever has been terrible. Like their financial situation has been terrible. They've gotten in trouble for like cheating the system a couple of times. Um, two years ago, they couldn't sign any players for like a whole transfer window. Yeah. yeah. Because they, they I, I guess, I don't know the details, but I know they committed some kind of fraud when it came to transfers. And... They were able to sign Griezmann after that, and they didn't really have success. And now yeah. 
do you lose Messi? Like it's you lose your whole team, bro. That's like it just Messi was That's, Barcelona. Yeah, Messi was Barcelona. I mean, he was the captain. You lost your leader. You know, you lost the captain of the ship. So now it's like, where is that ship gonna sail now? You know, it, it's not gonna be the same. It's not gonna be functioning. You know how it used to. Yeah. So who do you think is the best player of all time, in your opinion? My opinion. Or yeah, between the two, at least. Between the two, I mean, I could. I want to say Messi, bro, just because you know he has more, more golden balls, good in their own right. But it's just Messi has more of like you know, like he's he's my size, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he's my How size. How tall are you? I'm like five, five eight, five, five seven, something like that. Five, five eight and a half or something like that. But he's yeah. my size, and just like seeing somebody like Messi, like Ronaldo's what six two. Um, I was actually doing some research and. Uh, when Messi signed to um, for the first time with like Barcelona, um, he was diagnosed with GHD, which is like a like a growth disorder. Yeah, he was um, so like the the club at the time, like the first club was a River River um, River Plate River Plate. Yeah, so I think he played for New Old Boys. I'm not sure though, to be honest. Yeah, but the first club was that River he played Plate? was River Plate. Okay. Um, when he signed, uh like the contract or whatever they were paying for his medical expenses because he had a, at the time he was like five, seven. So yeah. Um, it's like a disorder where like your stunt, your growth, your, um, he was really short. Right? He was really Compared short. Players. And so all that money that he was making for, you know, in soccer, it all went to his medical bills and it wasn't like a lot of people were like what he was using growth hormones like he was getting injections um yeah like, bro he was taking steroids bro <laughs> that's why he's been no, so good he was taking steroids since he was like a little kid i remember he, about that story, he was bro. taking you can call the steroids whatever but it was like it wasn't performance enhancing it was like it was like for medical purposes but it was like under like like um physicians and all that stuff they were like it was like carefully studied and all that so it wasn't yeah so he was taking legal steroids bro <laughs> i mean like, he had to <laughs> could you imagine bro like miniature like little messy like i mean yeah of course field. as a human if he if he needed the steroids to get better he and, needed. and grow bigger could you imagine cool. bro but it's also i feel like that gave him an unfair advantage bro he was just getting pumped with steroids as a young kid just put it pushing himself further I mean, he and had further to. and further. <laughs> he had to, bro. You think like that man's gonna? I think stay? Messi's legacy's gotta be tinted, bro. That foot took steroids. <sighs> I don't know about that, bro. I mean, <laughs> you could say what you want, bro. But like, wouldn't you do the same? Wouldn't you do the same if you like? Would you be four seven and have like a bunch of four seven? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be four seven, but um, I feel. I mean, if I was, if I had a a growth hormone deficiency like yeah. that. Yeah, of course I would take the steroids, but um, I would just be like, if I'm the if I turn out to be amazing at one sport, put an asterisk on my name, bro, because I I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> he was saying legal steroids, nah, but yeah, Messi, bro, like I just think he's just been so dominant and individually, you know, he's more skilled than almost every player ever and shit. The so one thing though, he has not won a World Cup. That's the one thing, cause. A lot of a lot of like a lot of the times it's like we see Messi, but he's more like a he's more of a club player, you know? Yeah. He's more of a club player. And I think like what's what's funny is I was talking to a few people, I was asking, like, what do you think Messi's gonna go? Um, somebody told me he might play for Italy. And I was like, Really? Um, because I never really thought of like Messi as an international player like that, just cause I'm like, man, you know, Messi as a player, as a soccer player, he's done it all, but he has not won a World Cup. And that's crazy because, like, you know, in this country, he's kind of seen as a failure, you know, just because of that. Um, yeah, because the Maradona. So Maradona won the 1986 World Cup and then Maradona lost in, I think, in penalties in the 1990 World Cup. He went back yeah. to back World Cup finals. Yeah. So, yes, that's a big merit, but also not really because he he's carried teams. 2014 World Cup, he was the best player in the World Cup. He ended up winning, and they, um, they went to Sam. They Sam went to the final. They lost. Finals. They lost in overtime. A Mario Gotze Barra's goal. Like you can't take that away from Messi. Yeah. And although, like, I feel like Di Maria was the most important player on that Argentina team. Right. Di Maria didn't play in the final. Yeah, he he got hurt in the semifinal, but like he carried that team. Even when Messi was scoring the goals, like the assists were going to Di Maria or Di Maria would do some crazy yeah. shit, and then Messi would finish it. So Messi was great in that World Cup. He also, he won Olympic gold. He won under twenty World Cup. 
He's been to a bunch of Copa America finals. And I feel like winning a World Cup is so hard because it's four years yeah. and everything just, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Chance yeah. And sometimes the best team doesn't win. I mean, Mexico beat Germany 2018 World Cup yeah. in a one random game sample. Germany dominated Mexico at the end. They were just so I can survive. I just, I just, just think like, I, it's just a game of chance. You have one game. You prepare for four years. You go through the whole qualifying process. Yeah. You get there, and it's literally like you have 90 minutes, bro. And it, it could be random. You don't know who you're going to play. One lucky bounce. Fucking Mario got it. Yeah. Five more minutes. They could have gone to penalties, and maybe Argentina wins the World Cup. Yeah. Or stupid uh, Palacio. He missed an open one-on-one what? versus Mike, versus Neuer. In the World Cup final. And fucking Higuain, too. He yeah, missed yeah. A, a one-on-one against Neuer. He could have won the World Cup. But yeah, Messi can't control that Higuain is going to miss yeah, yeah. in front of the goalie, bro. Like, that's what I see. It's it's more of a team sport than, than an individual. I get it. World Cup's important. But at least he made it to a final. No, yeah, that's true. But I just think, like, there's one thing he probably should, like, have his sights, like, set. Because, you know, he's practically done everything he could for Barcelona. Yeah. Um, I just think like in his head, like what it like the next thing for him to focus on. That's all he needs. Probably a World Cup. And because then- next year's the World Cup. So that next year will be his final World Cup. Yeah. For sure. Next year is the last World Cup for Ronaldo, the last World Cup for Messi. Messi. Either team, uh Portugal has a badass team. Portugal stack, bro. Like they got so many great players. Now, Ronaldo doesn't have to do much. Just kind of show up, be the captain, because he deserves yeah. it. Even if he's not I feel like my next World Cup, maybe he won't be as talented as like other young players, but yeah. you do have to take him just for merit and for that. Like, what if Portugal wins? Yeah. Moment? The same goes with Argentina. Well, Messi is going to be great. He's going to be better than most people, but yeah. that's. I think that's what they're both playing for. Qatar 2022 next year. That's yeah. the last rodeo, bro. Like, like I wouldn't even be surprised if Messi once he, if he wins or he doesn't. If he wins, I think he'll retire. I feel like he, sure. he didn't want to play anymore. Like, well, yeah, just I mean, come out on top. That would be hard, bro. But if he loses, I don't know how long he'll stay playing. He will not make it for the 2026 World Cup. No, I don't know. So no. I feel like he'll just come to the U.S. and play for one of those, like, teams for a lot of money, just yeah. for publicity for the MLS. Ronaldo, though, I feel like Ronaldo would, even if he lost the World Cup in 2022, I feel like he'll still play, like, he'll three, four play. years to, to break more records, bro. Yeah. That who just wants to break records individually because that's his only argument against... Messi, Messi is just being a better scorer, having all these <laughs> records, you know, like Ronaldo's super competitive. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. It's like an end of an era for both of them. It's like when Kobe retired, like you said. Yeah, for sure. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy to see, like, they both left their own respective clubs. They, at this point, I mean, Ronaldo's like, what, 36? So, 32, 30. No, no, he's uh, 36 or 37. 36 or 37, yeah. I so think he's 37, and I think Messi's 36. 36. I yeah. mean, they're the same, around the same age. Yeah, Ronaldo's one year older, I believe. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, but in football, it's like, that's old. That's considered, like, old, you know? Yeah, a lot of players, by the time, after, like, 30, even 30s, bro, like, 32, 33, you're already considered, like, washed. The fact that Ronaldo and Messi are this high level at this, but also athletes are becoming better older so yeah previous years you didn't have the training or the tech that's why ronaldo's so great because he takes his body like a tempo you know he works out all the time yeah he doesn't eat bad he's super clean and messi's the same way no one he doesn't flaunt it because uh ronaldo flaunts like every second yeah. like his body and fucking this and that but messi's more humble about it but messi takes care of his body too like yeah. you never see how that food partying always working you know like yeah. trying to become the best of all time and that's what you do when you're the best of all time the same with lebron lebron is has the genes he's six nine super athletic but it's he has a work. crazy work ethic like you're not gonna still deny work, that man. yeah it's definitely the work the exit um i don't know if, if that was his actual house in the movie in space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that that's probably, be probably looks better than that shit probably <laughs> with all that money um yeah so uh, fun fact um, about Messi, too, is I was looking. I just found out about this, too. So supposedly Messi, his house in Spain or in Argent, uh, in Spain, he lives right next to like an airport, right? Yeah. And supposedly no planes fly above his house. Why? What do you mean? Because uh, for some reason, I think he will. 
uh, he lives 10, specifically he lives 10 miles away from the airport, but still like that's still relatively short, you know, with airplanes and stuff like that. Yeah. So I guess it's just like he probably paid the government of Spain like, hey, don't, don't fly, fly over my over house. house. <laughs> but like think about that. That's like he's like not even a politician or a president. He's just like the privilege he, the privilege no think about that he's just a soccer player who just happens to own like a two point uh he bought the house in 2019 or 17 for 2.1 put 7 million into the house for renovations so it's i mean the house i mean it's messy so the house is probably worth more oh yeah that the house itself just by saying like messy owned this house it's already like 10 times the price. But that's crazy, though. Like, having an airport and, like, not, like, you got to tell the pilot, oh, fly, you got to, like, fly around <laughs> instead of. Well, they, they have their coordinates, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. From when they take off the airport. But, yeah, bro. Uh, so, yeah, Messi going to either PSG or PSG. City. And that's crazy, too. That's another thing, too. That's another team that's stacked, too. Uh, PSG. I mean, you have, the, like, all those stars. Kylian Mbappe was killing it. He's young. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of cases and a lot of reasons why he could go to PSG. You have, uh, well, he played with Neymar. Yeah. And they they became best, not best friends, but they were they won the Champions League together, yeah, yeah, yeah. a bunch of La Liga titles. You have Di Maria. We Di talked Maria. about him. He plays with him in the national team. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, who else was, I don't know if there's any former team in some PSG, but I mean, that team is stacked. Berratti, then, then you have... Um, the great defense with Marquinhos yeah. and all those fools. I mean, they want they went to a, a Champions League final like two years ago during the pandemic. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that team stacking and adding Messi to that mix, bro. Like, like I'm three, telling you, bro, Neymar, Mbappe, and Mbappe Messi. and Messi in the front, bro. And then you have Di Maria in the in the in the middle. Or um you have like Di Maria. There, like, there's so many they have like six or seven midfielders. It's just so so much talent yeah. in PSG. Um the only thing is, like I said, is the system. You go to PSG with the stars, and that'll be fun to watch. Like no one ever—I don't even watch PSG games until it's like the Champions League because mm -hmm. it's they play in France, but yeah. like the Farmers League. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like no, no one really watches those games. But if Messi's playing with all those dudes, it's like it's like watching the Lakers or the Showtime. You know, you want to watch the prime time to yeah, see yeah. the stars play with each other. So that'd be that'd be interesting. I'll definitely get the ratings up for the French league. Yeah, definitely for sure. We'll get the Barcelona's gonna drop and plummet in like. Because all the, like you said, all those Barca fans, they were Messi fans. Now they're going to move to whatever he moves. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like, what do you say? It's like Kobe like or like LeBron, I guess, you know? Like oh, yeah. A lot of LeBron fans. A lot of LeBron fans. Like, first they were Cavaliers fans. Then they were he, he fans. It, it always transfers, you know? They transcend the sport. That's what's cool about these. We're in an era of, like, these these athletes that just trans just they're like in another stratosphere because you always had stars, but now with social media, they became even bigger. Social media just made like the stars of today so much bigger than the stars of like the nineties, you know? Yeah. you you see them everywhere. Ronaldo's like the most followed person in the world, like more he's, followers uh, than like Rihanna and Beyonce and all that shit. He's the most paid soccer player too. He's the first soccer player to be like a billionaire too. Yeah. Yeah, which is crazy. But, I mean, I could see that because it's Ronaldo, you know. It's that million-dollar smile. And, you know, it's, you, you see him <laughs> everywhere, bro. You see him everywhere. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's, like I said, is they just transcend. They transcend sports. They're, Ronaldo and Messi are way bigger than, like, LeBron. Like, people don't kind of understand. Soccer in general, bro. Because people look at, like, sports based on the American perspective, especially mm -hmm. here. But these guys are huge, bro. Nah, like, bro worldwide, it's international. No, bro. no, no question. Ronaldo, Messi, like two, three times bigger than well, LeBron's, um, the most well, yeah, because polarizing they, athlete here. Yeah, because they're signed. Like they have more attention, like internationally, and not just like, oh, you're only popular within this given region or a few mm -hmm. regions. Like soccer is more of a globalized and uh, not globalized international type sport, and like. Yeah, you know, with the more appear popular. more appearances, you know, on World Cups, and obviously that's gonna be more um, publicity for them, and they get their brand out there too. Yeah, there's a there's a lot. It's interesting the times we live in, and you brought in uh, Ronaldo was a billionaire. Uh, there was news earlier this week. Rihanna, 
became a billionaire this week. Barely? <laughs> what do you mean barely, barely a billionaire? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, I I mean, I know Rihanna's been in the game for a long time, but it's just, I kind of like, I thought she was, like, she was already a billionaire at this, like. No, billionaires, it's because billionaire is way different. So a million dollars, bro, like to make a million dollars is pretty easy. Yeah. To make one billion dollars, that's, that's like only like less than thousands of people in the world, bro. So a million millions, bro. Yeah. Think about that. Hundreds right? of millions, you mean? It's a hundred thousand million, right? Yeah, it's like something. Yeah, it's like a hundred million, nine hundred million, nine hundred million. So a one thousand millions. Yeah. So t- think about how much right now to get to a million dollars, how much it would be. Now times that times a hundred. Just to think about like, if you were trying to become a millionaire today, how many years do you think it would take you? Think about like the math, like how many sales you need to do. You know what I mean? Now multiply that times a hundred and then you get to, oh, times a thousand, bro. Times a thousand. I'd say it probably took her like 10 years, 10 years, probably just to get to that cap or more. I don't know how long it it took her longer since she started her career, but she didn't do it in music though. She became a billionaire through, through her Fenty clothing line. Oh, it wasn't through music? No, hell no. Oh, I was like, what music's that? not profitable. <laughs> like Kanye only made maybe like 30, 40 million from, from music. And he made the rest through the Yeezy and yeah. the, the collaborations. It's the same thing with like Jay-Z and all them. Like they don't, they don't do it through music. Music is the gateway. Yeah. Which is, that's so dope to think about. Like whatever art medium, you come from nothing. You could build a fan base. You do have to be talented or just put in a lot of work. And that opens opportunities for you. You start meeting people, investors. You can start your own clothing line, your own shoe brand, your own makeup brand, your own yeah. lingerie line. Like, there's so many options to go once you once you have influence. That's why influencers today is just like it's so valuable, and everybody wants to become an influencer for the same reason. Not everyone's gonna become a billionaire, but a lot of people are gonna definitely take advantage of this revolution. Yeah, definitely for sure. Because it's, I mean, everybody as long as you have access to a smartphone. You have access to the world, you know, and be like, hey, uh, I'm going to go meet this person in Dubai. Oh, just buy one DM. And then all of a sudden you get, you know, set up a meeting somewhere, have like at some office or whatever, Dubai, some hotel, whatever, whatever these people do, whatever kind of meetings they have. It yeah. could be for like discussing like a shoe deal, like, oh, we're going to move profits here. And yeah. It's, just collaborations. And, and a lot of times with these companies, well, yeah. Like Rihanna and Fenty and Kanye and like his designs, mm-hmm. they do have a lot of say, but it's the same process how we made the logo. Mm-hmm. Me and you will sit down, we'll come up with a design. Oh, oh yeah, we, uh, I want my logo <laughs> to be like this. And we were all fucking around with like Pix Monkey or whatever it's called. And we made a well, logo. Well, we were trying to establish like a foundation. Like we had a vision for like how. So we were trying to make a logo, right? Because, um, we're trying to like make like a studio, uh, like, like a studio page or like, Kind of find like a create like a media page to the display um, or like our, our videos and our videos pictures. or photos or um, just, you know, just to get something out there like under one umbrella. And we were trying to make uh, Angel has a page on Instagram called Best of India. And we're trying to rebrand that and make it into like a media page like uh, like we were saying. And we were trying to desi- design a logo through Pit Monkey and stuff like that. And we were just figuring out how to do it. Um we didn't <laughs> we're not graphic designers so we were just tinkering <laughs> around seeing what works getting inspired and then we just got frustrated we're like you know what let's just go you were, we already spent too much time let's just go pay somebody to do it for us and we did and out and and actually pretty came out pretty good yeah and it's fiverr bro fiverr.com fiverr with two <laughs> r's fiverr.com i'll put the link, link in the description and I, guess, I think uh, they have an affiliate marketing. So click the link in the description. They got services. Like you could get a um, videos edited. You can get pictures retouched, like Photoshop for like five to 10 bucks. So you pay some dude that lives in like Malaysia or like India or anything like that. Yeah. You pick how much you want to spend. For us, we spend about like 20 bucks on the logo. So we came up with a design of the logo. We're like, let's let's do this. Um, so we ended up naming this or rebranding the company. 
the best of India page that I had where I was already posting some videos. I wasn't as consistent as I wanted to, but I feel like now we'll be able to create a lot of stuff. And I kind of have like a, a different like switch where I want to be able to post more with more intent, like go out and just start recording shit. Like you went out and you did something for Izzy. We could do something. For I just happened to be there, dude. We I just, <laughs> I just have, well, I had uh, sent a meeting cause I saw Izzy at the, at the park, you know, well, he showed up uh, for Mills's performance when we were skating yeah. and I'm like, I needed a haircut. So I was like, Hey, Izzy, like now that he's here, let me, you know, send an appointment. And we set it to, you know, yes, um, Wednesday. And, you know, I just happen to have the, ca- I always have the camera around me. So I was like, Oh shit. Like I'm in a barber shop. Oh, let me like record. And he was like cutting some fool's hair yeah, and I was just like recording some stuff for Izzy. So I was like, oh, this would be good for Izzy to like make him a video. And yeah, I just started recording, did a video, started making a video for him. And it was cool. That's what I mean. And we have so much, bro. Like we have so much content that we haven't even posted on that page. There's just been so much. And I never wanted to promote to create videos and pictures as much because I was super busy. But now that I, you're here, we definitely had to take advantage of the space. And oh, definitely. W, we'll be able to cover more events and just do badass shit you know and we're just gonna get better over time so anyway we came with the the plan to rebrand from best of india which i created that page back in like 2016 2015 mm-hmm. that was just pictures of like people from india yeah, places yeah. in india and then i didn't post for like over a year or whatever and then i started posting again and i just i have like 1500 followers and i never yeah. even used that page bro it's just been sitting there it was easy to grow pages back then on instagram oh really yeah it was super easy bro back in the day you can grow any page like it'll take you like two three weeks and you'll get to like a thousand okay. now it's like nobody follows back so it's, yeah it's a little more difficult today in today's yeah, time market's saturated yeah like, just too much on instagram um but anyway we ended up we were actually trying to figure out a name for this company for the longest time before we got to the logo so yeah, we, yeah. you didn't mention that oh yeah, yeah well the logo is the fun part it was a fun part but um but for the for the name we were just we were just brainstorming ideas. I think we took longer trying to come up with a name, the name, yeah, than the actual logo because we were with the logo. We were just messing around and just getting inspired and just trying to come up with the foundation. But for the name, it was like, man, what should be the name? What we were, were some of the names we were coming up with? Man, I was on a name generator. We were like, <laughs> I was like something studios. We for sure it was either media studios um company company was a, you said it was a little too corporate so we were like something like foo foo uh <laughs> foo uh foo films media or yeah something. i was like foo film studios foo film studio like this foo that would have been funny uh, well then we're i don't know why we're like we needed to have it like in a spanglish give it like a mexican or hispanic fucking touch to yeah. it so we're like let's do something in spanglish so we were looking like we're looking at Spanglish like names and all kinds of stuff. I don't remember how we came up with the idea. Or maybe it was like a sample. And it, then, it was like a sample. You're like, you came up with the scenario. You're like, what are you doing? And then you're like, you had this idea of estoy filming. Like you like you said, you you wanted to like have something where it's like covering both markets, like English and Spanish. So it's like, ¿Qué estás haciendo? And you just pop that into your head and i was like oh shit let's run with it yeah yeah so the official name of our new like film our media, media company whatever, it's gonna be estoy, estoy filming. filming so estoy filming what are you doing oh estoy filming because that's in the oh estoy filming so it's kind of kind of like a spanglish and it kind of the name tells you what you're doing i'm it, filming it, and it rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Really. And even if you don't know what estoy means, like filming was something with film or cameras. What yeah, is that? Yeah. So it kind of tells you what it is in the name. And that's one of the things is like your name kind of have to tell you when it comes to branding. Like don't go, don't try to be too bougie and unique. Like, yes, be cool and unique, but also get to the point. Get to the point. Yeah, for sure. Like, like your tile business, you just put OC branded, branded and tile. tile. Get to the point. People know what it is based on the name. And if you're trying to sell service, that's like the the number one piece of advice that I have is you, your people need to know. Like I get calls like, oh, I, I saw you guys do granite and tile. I need, you know what I mean? Like it's just because yeah. of the name. So now people need films, people need videos, pictures. We're going to be able to do that. 
they know who to call. Not the Ghostbusters, but it's still filming. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Nah, but you uh, get like a fucking a tomato. We need a, where's the boo? Do 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 do. Or like those fake. Nah, jokes. but we were we were very selective uh, with the name, though, for sure. We were trying to because at first we were trying to like uh, put it to have it geared towards the valley, but we were like, what if we we don't want to like add Coachella into the name because you know we're never gonna you're not gonna outgrow the festival. You're not gonna outgrow the festival, you know, or maybe we will, but it'll be harder to. So it's better to like have like our own original name and just run with that. And that's smart because I didn't think about that. Yeah, and I didn't want to be tied onto the desert like as yeah, a, that's true. like what if the film company we move to LA or we move to Miami or we move to Texas or New York or London. And you're stuck London. with like fucking <laughs> Desert Hot Springs films. <laughs> desert Hot Springs films, and you're in London. There's nothing desert about here. What the heck? Yeah, like it's like we moved to the. Yeah, I just didn't want to be tied down yeah, to yeah. a city, even though it'd be cool. I just kind of felt like I gotta think long term. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what this is gonna be. It's gonna be like, well, because I know we can make some dope videos, and yeah, yeah. I, I definitely um, so much that could be branded from this. So stay tuned for some story, story filming. Still be filming content coming up soon. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely check it out. We got Izzy's video dropping soon. Brian uh, edited some stuff for Izzy. We were talking about earlier. But yeah, bro. Um, speaking of movies too, I w- I wanted to bring this up that now we're talking about movies. Travis Scott, he was announced earlier this week that he's gonna be partnering with A twenty four, the studio behind uh, some of the best films of recent times. Like that's a studio where everybody that's like an independent or upcoming artist wants to work with. It's a studio Come- located in L A. Right. A twenty four. I don't know where it's located. I just know that they make like amazing indie films. Bro. My favorite movie was mid nineties, bro. I'm a skateboarder. I'm mid nineties. Mid nineties. Jonah amazing. Hill's directed. Um, you have Lady Bird, which nominated for all kinds of Academy Awards. Yeah. You have Call Me by Your Name, which uh, ended up getting nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards. Hereditary, uh, The Lighthouse with Robert Pattinson. Mm. Like that movie was amazing too. Like A twenty four is just that studio. It's like the upcoming studio that everybody wants to work with. Anyone yeah. that's really talented. So. Travis Scott, who's just one of the most creative artists, who's just influential. He's influential. One of the biggest superstars in the world. We talked about him yeah, earlier, yeah. like his music <laughs> and the other podcasts. But now he's getting into the film industry, yeah. which he's already creative because, like, his concert stages and everything. The designs, his music amazing. videos too. The music videos he's done, like shit with Fortnite. He's done stuff with McDonald's. Like this guy's brand just keeps expanding. He's marketable, man, and and you like to see it. You like to see uh like people like that just being a jack of all trades you know in in a way he's just coming out you know you never know what he's gonna come out with you know because he's always working on things like dude like would you expect travis scott to be like associated with sony of course not (laughs) let alone mcdonald's bro and like oh and that the same thing that's happening to him you use music as that gateway to be able to do the things you always want to do yeah he became a great musician, amazing collaboration songs, albums. Mm-hmm. Now he gets to do those deals cool, with sure. like the big company. Yeah. Now he gets to do movies. Like, I'm excited. I'll, I'll definitely be watching that. Whatever, whatever the movie's gonna yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Ki- I'm. I think it was uh, Cact- Cactus Jack Films, or I forgot what it's called. Like, what's his brand name? Cactus Cactus Jack. It's Cactus Jack. Yeah, right? yeah. That's it. Was Cactus Jack? Films. He has his own like alcohol too. The cacti. Oh yeah. This dude, I'm, I'm telling you, bro, like he's just coming out with products left music. and right, and that's cool. That's cool. Music's the gateway. That's what it is now. It's like social media. People, People. use uh, music to for stat for the status, and then from there, the status leads to networks. Those opportunities. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing we're doing in podcasts here, here in the Coachella Valley. Now you're starting to see more podcasts and more people creating. I like that. Like, I get to see. Um, shout out to Valley Talk Radio. It's like the newest podcast. Oh, really? That just dropped recently. Um, they've only done one episode. They're going to have Nils. Oh, okay. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. second episode of Upcoming Tune. And they're they're based out of the Index Room. Oh, okay. So they're filming at the Index Room. Nils um, is always Booby, in the Index he's, Room. I, I know one of the guys that's like the host. And I, I was messaging him, like, yeah. whatever you need, just let me know. Like, how? I mean, I'm not like an expert, but I've been yeah, doing yeah. this for a while. So whatever you need. He's like, oh, you're a big inspiration, bro. Like. I definitely was watching your stuff and that's dope. Like you impact people without even trying. 
because people see you doing shit. They're like, if this one could do a podcast, if me and you could do yeah, a yeah. podcast, anybody else could do a podcast. And that's what it is. It's like we want to inspire more people because there's so much room for growth here, especially here in the Valley. Like we need more. Well, yeah, man, because it's, it's just. You know, you never know until you try. And I think it's oftentimes it's it's just those moments like sometimes like you don't know that you might be inspired to like you're you're inspiring somebody because that person may not tell you, but you just keep being consistent, keep doing putting in that work, keep putting out videos, keep pumping out content. And just by, you know, you putting out content, that person is inspired. So that's I didn't even know about that. That's crazy. Yeah. No, I, don't, I mean, I don't want to. It's definitely like he probably had a passion project. No, yeah. He definitely said he was watching my stuff. And I know he always like he'll be asking me stuff because he's a great Madden player too. Oh really? That's somebody that get, he'll come and win the Madden turn, bro. Like this he got signed for like um I think an upcoming like gaming brand. Like they signed him just as a Madden like like player. like uh as a Madden player, Madden yeah, streamer. Like a small like, like in, video game. Like company. an endorsement, right? Something like that? Yeah, oh, okay. like a um, face clan, but like a, a upcoming small... Like an esports team. Oh, okay. Esports team. That I couldn't okay. think of the name. Yeah, okay. he got signed for an esports team to just to be a Madden like player because he was that good. Bro. He's, he's really cool, talented. bro. We definitely... Uh, you mentioned the, the, the Madden tournament. So um, we're only going to give a little bit of small details, but we're planning this little game tournament, um, you know, here locally, just to have like a pop-up show. Um Figured it'd be cool to do something like that for Madden 22 or Madden. Yeah, right. Madden 22. Is it Madden 22? I don't even know how many years this is. It's it's like, Madden 20. Whatever the next update that where they just add a new roster and it's the same game over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. People still be buying that just because it's Madden. I mean, what other There's, alternative? Well, is? They, they got the monopoly on football games, bro. That's what um, the same thing with football, with um, FIFA. And FIFA. And and There's a, so yeah, we're we're still working on the details We're but working the, um, the plan for this madden tournament which is not going to be madden so if you don't play madden we're trying to do it for 2k and fifa, FIFA. and maybe call of duty maybe like those ufc games so we want to do um maybe here at the food park maybe somewhere else we're still kind of like i said there's a lot we're of just stuff. putting it out there but we want to do a madden tournament like four to five hundred bucks cash prices we're going to give away either whatever the game tournament is so we're doing a madden tournament because at the end of this month, Madden comes out, so we'll yeah. be able to do a Madden giveaway. Or we do a, when the NBA season rolls around, we'll do a 2K tournament with cash prices and give away a copy of 2K for like Xbox and like PlayStation. And then the same thing with like FIFA. Um, like I said, we're still working on details, <clears throat> working with other brands to collaborate, give more giveaways, yeah. and just get like a community event because there's nothing here, bro. And like, I I love everybody loves video games. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure even the people that don't longer play video games, when they were coming up, when they were in their twenties, whatever, they wish there would have been more tournaments. And I feel like even in today's age, I feel like we all oh, want yeah, that. bro. Especially like during like even in arcades, bro. Back when we had arcades, yeah. Like Meet people would just quarters. people would just watch like a guy who was good like at Pac Man who would just happen to have the highest score. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Like people we, would just crowd we, around. We, just, we, yeah. <laughs> there was a. Yeah, but people just flock. It's like a psychology thing. Like when there's people watching, people come and want to be part of the movement. Well, it's the same thing, bro. It's like you you watch professionals or you watch good people, you know, just because it inspires you it too. Inspires they inspire you. you to become better. You lose that Madden tournament, you're like, fuck, next one, I'm gonna come back. Yeah. I think this this I think we're that should be something. I like. actually have a funny story because um I actually flew out uh this was like in middle school. But uh, I was at a convention center for like one of the projects that I was doing. Yeah, uh, I went to New Orleans, and in this convention center, it was just it was about like when like uh, like renewable energy and all that stuff. And there was this booth that had this like old like Atari system. Like I can't tell you what Atari what, system yeah. it was, <laughs> but I just know it was like the one with the switches. You know what I'm talking about? And it had like the dial um the one where like i don't remember that i, I don't think i ever played those that well much. it's it i'm not that old bro <laughs> Calm down, bro. i grew up on the fucking gamecube bro. Yeah, GameCube. <laughs> hey that's that's the shit that's uh, that that is for sure an underrated console but um but it was like this atari system um and like the game was pong and like they had like a competition where like Oh, if you have like a highest score of the, it was just basically you against the computer, right? It was the, it yeah. was a pong, right? And, um, they basically had like 
like a cash prize, like whoever has the highest score of the day, like the whole day, you won like an iPad Air. And like oh, I was, I, I was like, I was like in middle school, it was like the iPad Air 2, 3, I yeah. don't know, some shit like that. It was, I was, I was small. So, bro, I didn't even walk around all the booths. As soon as I heard like, they're giving away I could something. give away some shit, bro. I was there like trying to fucking beat my score. Like I didn't let nobody touch that dial, bro. I was trying to like, F, like as soon as I kept like losing, I was like, fuck, let me get it. I mean, to get another try just to like beat my score one more time. And I was just there the whole time, bro. Like the whole day. Cause I was trying to, I was like, I was like so focused in, on getting in your the mind, iPad you wanted to win that game. I was like, fuck. I was just like in the zone, bro. I was like, fuck. Um, and like, I got to like level, like the highest level, bro. And it was crazy. Cause the, like, the, um, I guess that the way that they had it was like, every time you beat the computer, like it goes, the difficulty goes higher, 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 higher. Yeah. So like, I ended up, like playing against like the insanely high, you know, uh, difficulty. And it was just, it's crazy. Cause like in the game it was just like moving up and down, up and down. So it was like, fuck, how do I track the ball? Like my eyes were moving everywhere. And I was just like, fuck, I was just like, I was in the zone, bro. So I was just like, boom, 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 boom. Just hitting it all. Like, I don't need, it was just Did pixels. You end up winning something or? I ended up winning, bro. I ended up winning the, the iPad air. And, you know, even though I wasted like the whole day, my whole day just playing an old Atari game, I won the iPad Air and I still have it to this day. That's actually. fucking dope, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool, bro. And that's the souvenir that I took from New Orleans. So, I wow, that, yeah. that's dope. That's, yeah. There it is. Man, video game tournaments. Video game tournaments, bro. You see, like you end up. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You got to go home with you, an iPad Air, bro. You might come home There's, with a um back in coachella bro there used to be sony sony used to be one of the sponsors for coachella 2011 12 and i don't know what other years for sure but i remember 2012 mm -hmm. i had my friend marcus shout out to my boy marcus um coachella 2012 they had so it was a playstation bus you go in there it's air conditioned and they just literally had the ps3 i think it was ps3 at the time 2012 yeah, yeah. 2013 ps3 and they had tournaments throughout the day if you won the little like eight man tournament you get upgraded to VIP. What? So GA people are just going there. So my, my boy Marcus, he won two. He won like four VIP passes, like, bro, throughout Damn. the weekend. Because he was super good at video games. He's what, still super good at video what, games. What was the game? Um, It was like Little Big Planet. Oh, okay. It was Little Big Planet. And I feel like one of them was a baseball game. So it wasn't, it was different games. It was too. different games. Okay. Yeah. So it was the baseball, like the show, Little Big Did Planet. Did they have that one, like Super Smash Brothers? I think it was like All Stars or something like that. No, it was way before that. Oh, okay. That came out like 2016. Mm. But yeah, bro, like, so they used to have a PlayStation sponsor. You could upgrade to VIP. And he gave me two VIP passes on, like, on a Sunday. So I didn't really get to enjoy them, but he. He won two of them, and he ended up. He went to play again just for fun, and he yeah. won two more. And he gave me and my, I think my brother, like two VIP passes. Dude. So we ended up getting like VIP for just for him playing video games. That's bro. crazy. And um, I I forgot what year Sony stopped sponsoring, so they took that off. So now uh, you, they don't have that anymore. But that that's they, that's something that Coachella should bring back. Bring they back should the bring it back <laughs> for bring sure. Back the PlayStation tournaments, bro. Especially now, just because like PS Five is a little dry right now. Just saying. What you mean? It's still sold out everywhere. You it's still it. sold out. No, but it's like I've heard that like the season, even like for the people that I know that have the PS5, it's like it's a little dry, like not enough games or what? It's not that there's not enough games. It's just like it's just been like it's not all that, you know, like it's it's just dry, like more. I guess like more games are more, I guess, according to my friend, like the last game that he was hyped for was a new Spider-Man game um miles oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the miles turner one yeah miles turner miles morales <laughs> yeah miles turner. but i don't know like have you ever bought in like consoles like day one or i've never, never? bought a camp uh, mm, i don't know let me double think i don't want to say i never done yeah i've never done it so the only one that i got not like day one but the playstation 3 i got it like during christmas the year it came out. Oh, you got the OG PS4, right? The PS3, 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 the the fat one, right? Yeah, the fat PS3, and um, Damn, with bro. with my very first Blu-ray, it wasn't. You know where I got it from? From a store. You probably don't even know this store, but what was the store? Circuit City. Circuit City. Uh, Do you remember Cir Circuit no, City, no. bro? You don't remember Circuit City? Fuck. Where was that at? Where's that at? <laughs> Damn, bro, you're you're too young. I'm too young. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
Whereas Circuit City was basically like Best Buy. Mm -hmm. It was just like Radio Shack or Best Buy was all digital stuff. That yeah, movies. Yeah. It was like a competition to Best Buy. And um, it was in Palm Desert. Oh, that's probably why I didn't. Damn, I don't remember it. where it was. Maybe by the Target. I don't know. But yeah, Circuit City, they had a bundle with uh, Spider-Man 3 on Blu-ray. Okay. And the only reason, because I, I had both the Xbox and then I had the the PS2. Okay. I had both of them, both the consoles. Xbox, the, the, the original, original Xbox. Because okay. it was uh, right before the Xbox yeah, 360. Yeah. So I, a lot of my friends were getting the 360, but I was like, one, I played the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, and I loved it. Yeah. And... I was a big movie fan, and I was like, oh, Blu-ray is going to change the game. Blu-ray is, like, amazing. I can watch some videos about it. And then the Xbox 360 couldn't play Blu-ray discs, which is stupid. You needed to get, like, an attachment. Yeah. And then the PlayStation could play Blu-ray discs. So I ended yeah. up going with, just for that reason, I went with PS3. And the bundle that I bought from Circuit City was a Spider-Man 3 bundle, which came with a, a Blu-ray disc of Spider-Man 3. Spider -Man 3. <clears throat> and I was like, I still have that Blu-ray. I don't think I think I donated the, the PlayStation to like my cousins in Mexico, I believe. Yeah. But like I be that was my first Blu-ray, and I ended up having like a Blu-ray collection over six hundred Blu-ray copies. What, and that that was the first what, one I ever got. What's the difference between Blu-ray and like DVD? Like, just for the people that don't know. So, Blu-ray is higher quality because you could store more data. Okay. So, it's like the same with floppy disk versus like a USB. Like oh, okay. the floppy disk couldn't take enough data. So the technology in the Blu-ray, you're able to just put more and more information in there. So higher quality film, higher and resolution, higher resolution. Then you could, it could have all the like special features you did with the Blu-ray. You don't need like two discs, like on DVD, you have like oh, the special yeah, yeah. features and you still have some movies that are long, like Lord of the Rings. Like I have the Lord of the Rings extended edition on Blu-ray. That one has like disc for each fucking movie. Cause that's just long as fuck. Yeah, yeah. But one and then they're scratch like resistant, so I don't know what kind of material they use, but they don't scratch as easy as DVD. DVD, if really? any little scratch, they would stop playing. Oh, Blu rays okay. last a lot longer. Um, and then that's like all I know to be honest. Like it's better quality because you can store more data in yeah, it yeah. and all that stuff. And it's the same thing with the 4K discs now, the new ones. There's like 4K ones, the black covers. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not like a big technical guy, but I just know that they they no, would yeah, definitely yeah. last longer and uh, they had a just more memory you know that's i've noticed something like that too whenever i would play the like uh whenever i would play the xbox 360 games too is like just because it was, or like rent like watch a regular dvd movie is that like the disc would scratch very easily yeah and whenever my brother had like a blu-ray disc or something like that it would never scratch or it was like kind of like look brand, brand new, new. yeah <laughs> i don't know what the technology they use that's crazy but also like and they feel thicker too. Mm. I, I don't know why. They're almost like the same size, but when you weigh or one of them weighs more than the other, like the Blu-ray weighs a lot more. More probably because of like the uh, more more layers, the material. Yeah, that they use. I don't. I don't know what they use for those, but anyway, yeah. Um, so you got it at Circuit City. Uh, your PlayStation Three. PlayStation Three, Circuit yeah. City, and that's. I still have the Spider-Man. I don't know why I, I told the story, but <laughs> anyway, and this one doesn't. Well, this one doesn't know Circuit City, though. bro. I'm 18 <laughs> years old, man. I grew up on. At least I know what Video Depot was, bro. That's that's. Oh some shit, old, that's, some, that, that's, that's, some old, that's some old school shit, and I think Blockbuster was like. Um, where the, was Blockbuster at? I, I remember there was a Blockbuster before Black, I closed. Blockbuster was where Metro PCS is at right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> right there in 111, Metro PCS. That was Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The store right there in the corner. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Right by the gas station. Mm. No, but yeah. And there's a. Do you remember the one that was over there at uh, Hollywood Video? Yeah, yeah, Hollywood Video. I remember. Yeah. I remember we rented, like, my first time going there. Um, I think we got the Wizard of Oz. It was like my first, like, First time there, I got Wizard of Oz. I used to rent video games from the Hollywood Depot. Um, they had good rentals, better than than a Blockbuster for rentals. I think. Oh, really? Hollywood Video. Yeah, they had better deals. I remember I used to rent video games all the time. <laughs> I for, feel like yeah. I don't even know the last time I rented a video game, but yeah, when they when they had that service, I would go in. You get it for like seven days. I, I that's the way I played Call of Duty for the first time. It was Call of Duty 3 or Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1. Yeah. yeah. Or Big Red something. That's uh -huh. what it was called. That was a and I, it wasn't even multiplayer. Like, it was just story mode. That was my first bro, introduction I to Call of Duty. Bro, I would never buy bro. video games brand new. Every time they came out, bro, 
instantly i hit video depot the next day if i knew like call of duty or the new wwe game was going to come out i like instantly because all the uh video depot, they would always have it and i always got mad like when people like checked it out before me oh always bro always. Yeah, there's motherfuckers that be waiting for those rentals and it was cool because you get the itch like and i feel like that's something that's lost because now you just download games so easily that you don't yeah. you don't appreciate it like Going physically to a video store and looking around, reading titles because, fuck, I'm only going to have this for seven days or I don't want to spend this money. Now it's like you got your system, you download whatever game, you play, you don't like it, you download another game. And it's just you lose that kind of like like adventure, finding a yeah. game to play, you know, like finding that one movie you didn't even know you would like, yes, exactly. but you liked it just because it, you know, the cover looks cool or the story or even the the disc and the disc art would look cool yeah and yeah it's, it's something that's lost in today's technology you, you're on netflix and yes there's thumbnails or whatever and you're skipping through them but, but it's, it's like not the it's same the it's the experience of like going into a store like actually finding you know it's kind of like kind of like thrift thrift stores but for like you for know, film movie, exactly for that is that's a great nudge yeah there's a movie that i oh bro i gotta tell you there was a movie that my family, were, we would always look for crazy. We would watch foreign films, too, like, oh, all really? the time. We would look for something that looked cool. And there was a movie. It was called Amore. Uh-huh. Something perfume. Amore, like. That sounds perf- like a cologne. <laughs> like a perfume. Amore. Story of a killer or story of a murder. I oh, swear okay. that was, like, the title. And it was a French film. It was in French. Oh, wow. And it was a story about this dude who had. I don't know. They say it was based on true events, but it's mm. probably not. <laughs> they they take that it. very lightly. When you see that in a movie and it says based on a true story, it's like 10% based on a true story and then yeah. they exaggerate <laughs> for Hollywood the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But we watched this movie, Amore, like story of murder or something. Mm-hmm. I got to look up the name right now. And the story was about a French dude during like right before the French Revolution, you know, like they were struggling to find food. Everything was mm-hmm. just a disaster or whatever. And this guy, I guess his nose was like super strong, like. You could just, he was so good at smell. Uh So he went by some guy who like a perfume maker and he kind of like became as a mentor to this guy to learn how to make perfumes and stuff, you know, like there's roses. He would like smell the roses and pick the best ones and make his own like perfume, perfumes mostly for women. Yeah. And um, so this guy ends up like, like training his nose, how to like like smell, getting obsessed with smells. And he would like smell girls. He would smell girls because like, he wanted to capture their essence. the essence of like virgins, like these perfect virgin Whoa. girls. It's, it, it turns into a crazy story, bro. So he ends up like kind of kidnapping and like, like killing lo- these like virgin girls and like getting their fucking like smells and combining them into like this fucking uh, bottle of like perfume. And when what he sprayed heck? it, it would literally like it was so strong that everybody would like fucking like go to towards it because it was so powerful so at the end of the film i don't know want to spoil it i don't know and someone gonna watch that movie probably I mean, not. how old is the movie <laughs> so i mean the movie came out like i don't know 2007 8 wow yeah so this film this dude like at the end it was so powerful like the smell from this was so powerful and so dominant because it was oh it's 12 virgins he wanted to get the essence of 12 yeah. virgins and convert that into a perfume so the, the power of this perfume That's- it was too powerful for men to understand. So at the end yeah. of the movie, he goes to the downtown. He's surrounded by a bunch of like homeless. You know how like it was yeah. it was really bad times. And he, he pours the entire bottle on his head. And then like everybody around him like flocks towards the smell. And then they start like killing this for like eating them or like just clawing what? him just because it was so powerful of a smell. Wow. So that's the story of this film. And um, it does, I think it has a famous like French actor, but I don't remember who it was. But this movie's crazy, bro. Like, That's I definitely recommend insane. it. Insane. Wow. Just that story, just the whole plot. Just, it's a crazy plot. <laughs> That's crazy, but that's definitely dope. I mean, uh, if there's one movie that I've discovered that I, I didn't like, that blew my expectations from a video store, it was definitely, um, uh, what was that movie? I definitely, I mean, there's been a, quite a few of movies that I've seen that like blew my expectations. Uh, I never really watched foreign films like that, but I did uh, discover watching like for sure uh, Top Gun, um, Top Gun with Tom Cruise. 
Um, I didn't think uh, the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix was going to be good. Oh, that movie's amazing. Yeah. I I just, I don't know. Like, we, like, Siri, a story about Siri. I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but how accurate is that movie right now, bro? You know, we're and, heading to that direction, bro. That, that is true. Voice is the future. Um, what do you, what do you think about her? It blew. It just blew my expectations. Like when I first saw it, uh, it's, it's really good. It's a very good romance movie. I'd see. I'd watch it again. It's so. It's such a good film. So the film. Let me. Uh, I found the movie that I was talking about earlier. It's called Perfume: The Story of a Murder. So it wasn't called Amore. It was called Perfume. Yeah, Story of a Perfume. Murder. I was like, dude, that sounds like a cologne. <laughs> Yeah, Perfume, Story of the Murder, 2006. The film came out 2006. It has a four-star rating. Uh, it's not the greatest, but it definitely um, it's a pretty decent film. Who was the main actor? That I... Oh, Alan Rickman. Yeah, okay. Alan Rickman was in it. Alan Rickman's uh, Severus Snape. Oh, okay. So Alan Rickman was in it, and then the main actor was Ben Winshaw. I don't know who the fuck that is, but yeah, bro, this movie, this movie is crazy, bro. I definitely recommend it. Perfume, the story of a murder. That that's him when he like sprayed it on his head, right? Like right there. I think so. Him? Yeah, that looks like it is. Oh, and then shit. you see the girl like with petals, like because he's getting the smells yeah, yeah. out, like on the on the cover of this. Yeah, this movie is like something that anybody wants to watch, like a foreign film that you think, oh, this movie might be dope. I definitely recommend this. Song, he saw a true story. What the heck? <laughs> That's what I mean, bro. That they, sounds they, way. They, they be crazy. saying the dumbest shit for based on a true story. Now back to her. That could be a true story, bro. We're we're talking to this lady that we can't speak because she turns on all the lights and shit yeah. in this freaking room. The A word, and um, we have the S word with the phones, and we ask them questions, and it kind of sucks. Like sometimes they don't understand. Yeah. Especially for me, because I speak with like an accent sometimes and I'm out paisa. Yeah. So like, <laughs> <laughs> these people don't understand me. But in 10, 15 years, bro, like you don't even have to open your phone, like touch your phone. It's going to be all like in her. Oh, check my email. Is there anything important? Oh, you got an email from fucking this guy. You know what I mean? It's going to be like, like that. holograms and shit. You know, think about that. You- it's about, hmm. It's all about convenience. So everything's it's getting faster. It's about convenience. Faster. Like everything is faster. The purpose is like you. The, the purpose is, like, you have to do, like, it's more for, like, multitasking. Like, if you're, like, brushing your teeth and you just want to, like, find something out, you just ask, you know? You don't want to be touching things. You don't want to be touching things. Have your you're... hands wet. Yeah. And I, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be, because in the movie Her, mm-hmm. this would just be, like, oh, check check my email. Or it's, like, oh, I went through your email and I found, like, 300 messages that are a bunch of coupons are expired. You want to delete them? Yeah. Oh, I organize everything in your computer here, all the files. Like, that sounds amazing. Imagine they could organize our mess that we have on the, on the desktop right now. Like, that'd be great. That'd be great. Now, the only problem with Apple that is... Um, would, would go up. <laughs> <laughs> we need to create that program right now, bro. You better get get back into coding, dog. We need to create a, the next app. On it. Um, I think the future, it has to be more convenient. So what's more convenient is voice. Voice activated. Everything's going to be voice activated. Now the question becomes whether we need the Neuralink that Elon Musk wants to do and implant shit into our brains, because he says that we we won't be able to keep up with the computing and computing and like receiving all the information. Like right now, think about how much ads and how much information you consume every day from opening TikTok to opening Instagram to checking your text to going on YouTube to reading some random shit. Like we're overwhelmed with information every day, yeah. And then we miss stuff, like you said, we. We miss trailers. We miss some controversy or yeah. some. There's YouTubers out there with like millions of subscribers that you've never even heard of. Yeah. That we don't know who the fuck they are because we can't keep up. Like we can only consume Obtain so much, so much. But Elon Musk is proposing with a Neuralink connected with to your brain like a fucking chip, like in the sci-fi films, bro. Like you connect to the Matrix and you'll be able to absorb more information yeah. so you could keep fa- keep up faster. It does open the question, like. Who's behind this? Why do they want to put chips inside it? You know, like, oh, fuck. That's like some cyberpunk 2077 type shit. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, you ever put a neural link inside your nah. fucking head, bro? Hell no, man. I don't. I don't. I got to see people like do it first and then maybe. But I just, man, that that's just so sketchy. That, that, that's like 
there's a lot of possibility. There's a lot like what can go wrong will go wrong. You know, like what happens yeah. if somebody hacks into your fucking your shit? Brain. <laughs> like, you know, that's true. Well, I feel like you even need you need to make sure there's some crazy cyber security. But the thing about the Neuralink as well is you're going to be so more advanced that you almost have to take it in order to evolve as a species. That's what Elon Musk was saying on the podcast. For example, if you know that the Neuralink is going to cost $20,000 when it first comes out or $50,000, it's going to be super expensive. But if you connect to this Neuralink, you'll be able to make those $50,000 like that because you are you have access to so much more potential and power or like even access to your own brain. The, the thoughts and the shit that you already know that you forgot about, some obscure knowledge that you have that sometimes people bring it up where we're talking about like the, the amore per, or the perfume story of a murder, like this like whole story. Like you can replay movies and, and stuff. Is that what you're trying to like say? Well, like, I, I don't know how crazy no, tapping but, into the matrix but you're able to remember more, to process things faster, to remember things better. So you're just like on a whole another level. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be able to come up with perfume, the story of a murder, this whole sequence that I told you about. Because we we kind of led up to it by talking about renting. And when you talk about renting, blockbuster, then I trigger the memories of the fucking Hollywood video. And then it triggered the memory of me renting that movie mm. in Hollywood video. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, we had like steps in order to get to these fucking memories but with the Neuralink, you should have access to those at all times which is like jimmy neutron got a blast <laughs> <laughs> it's just those gears just start turning but that's crazy man it's just being like being having the computer like being like inside you that's just a whole nother level that's that's crazy yeah and i, I wouldn't do it right away but it's interesting i feel like I, the next generation after us is definitely going to do Or maybe when we're like 60 and shit. Mm, maybe. 50 years from now, the that's The technology, common. it just has to be, one, has to be very convenient. Two, it has to be safe. Um, Because I know like a large, I don't think, I, I feel like there would be like a few people just to like say that, oh, like I did it. You yeah. Know, just Th- there'll like definitely I, be people who want to just sign up day one. Yeah. Just test it. Just test it. But. You know, it's like, what are the repercussions? Can you take it out? I don't know. I don't know the details. You have to talk. No, to no, call, no. Call Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon, <laughs> come, come, come to this podcast. No. Come to the studio real quick, Elon. Dude, but that's that's crazy. It's like we've gone to the point where we, I don't know. I mean, it sounds good on paper. It sounds interesting, but it's just, man, like. What would happen if uh, you have the near link and all of a sudden you just create the dose to cancer, you know, the, the, the cure for cancer? Well, that's well, no, well, that, that's an well, that, extreme. That, no, that, no, 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 that, that, no, you're you're you brought up a great point because that's one of the things for the research behind Neuralink. The first thing is not to enhance humans. The first thing is to to cure problems like Alzheimer's, mm. people forgetting things, um, people forgetting people like getting seizures prevent you and insert that shit in your brain people that suffer severe seizures where they're like at work and they just collapse and shit like they could die choking their tongue and shit prevent those type of diseases first um that'll be the the solution for Neuralink first medical you know like first is emergencies then once you know that it helps people that have disabilities it's like oh now could we enhance regular humans you know like then it's like taking those leaves so yeah first is the medical so trying to find a cure for cancer trying to find a cure for like i said lou gehrig's disease fucking all this shit that's just obscure that people can solve you know we're gonna have like high like a uh intelligent civilizations like wakanda creating like these societies (laughs) (laughs) like we have vibranium like all of a sudden we discover vibranium and vibranium's that that neural thing i'm telling you (laughs) some elon musk is onto something i don't know if it's good but he's definitely onto some shit yeah See, and every time we talk about elon musk that happened in the last podcast too you get a calls every time bro hey man elon is calling he's... Elon, been, you've been to too many of those conventions <laughs> bro those uh where's it uh i don't want to i don't want to disclose you know <laughs> <laughs> and telling you this is gonna create some crazy ad bro i'm telling you <laughs> that looks like andrew garfield bro who the fuck is that guy 
Andrew Garfield, the Spider Man guy, nah. John Baptiste Grenouille, Superior Offertory Sense, bro. Damn good show. Dustin Hoffman's in the film too. I, I want to watch this movie again. We should. <laughs> Story of a murder, dude. That movie looks insane. Should you should have reviewed it? You know, back then when you made your movie reviews. Now that, I watched this movie before I even had a YouTube channel, but that's a long time ago. It's 2006. It's the birth of YouTube. The year of the YouTube, yeah. yeah. And my first video was 2007. Oh wow! So you were like a year ahead. Well, like no. what was what was what was like YouTube like? Well. I don't want to say YouTube, but like, were people like hip with YouTube? Were they like onto YouTube? Was it like? No. So 2007, I was introduced. 2006 or 2007, mm -hmm. because I had a teacher in my eighth grade year, bro. I had him for um, social studies or history. Yeah. I still remember. So every morning you walk into class. The first five to ten minutes of class, he was playing YouTube videos. What? So he will pull up like funny, like first it was the the viral videos, like cats. Yeah. yeah. Um, it'll be cat videos. It'll be like the videos of like, do you ever see the one where the Star Wars guy who's like, yeah, yeah. videos like that. There was like a video like I will survive with it, like a girl's like singing into yeah. it, like with like like a CGI face. So my first introduction to YouTube, two thousand six, two thousand seven, was viral, just videos. viral funny yeah. videos, and the teacher would play them just before school. And I, de I remember joining YouTube and I would watch videos like that too, like uh, Charlie Bit My Finger videos. Mm -hmm. um, the cat piano. The cat piano videos. That's what it was. It was just memes. It was just funny meme videos. People would upload memes like, before memes. <laughs> yeah, memes before memes. Shit was funny. People would uh, get millions of views from cat videos and clickbait. I'll be like, oh, hot girls, fucking this and that. And I'll be like, just on the thumbnail, but I'll be like, nothing. I'll be some stupid yeah, video. Yeah. Um, that's my first introduction to YouTube. My first upload on YouTube was 2007. So I, I took a video productions class and I had, I was in charge of going to the bell game my freshman year. Oh, and then you uploaded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so I went to the bell game and I was sideline. I had like sideline passes. So I was a freshman. I didn't even know what really about football or the bell game and just recording and seeing that 10,000 people in the stadium, bro. I was like, Oh fuck. And I'm on the fucking field recording and shit with <laughs> a camera. Then I had to edit the videos together. It was me and another dude, and I edited the video, and we, we played it in the morning announcements. So that was my first video. And then I, since I made it for the class, I took it home, and I was like, oh, I'll upload it to YouTube. I fucking signed up to YouTube, and I uploaded it. And it got a bunch of, like, thousands of views, like 2007. And then I didn't upload at all. Then I the next upload was the Belgian 2008. So I just literally Damn. made the same video. Same video. So the first two were Bell Game. And then um, then after that was like, I started getting more active, but like one video every like three or four months or yeah, six yeah. months. Just kind of like with no intentions. There was no YouTubers back then. It was just people just upload. It was just shit. like a casual thing. It was like not making money on YouTube was not a thing. <laughs> it wasn't. It was the people that are creating shows were people that were already doing like other types of media. Yeah. And you didn't start seeing personalities until like 2008 or nine. And it was like Billy Ray Johnson. No, what the fuck was his name? Billy Ray. Was it? Like equals three. It was like the channel was like equals three. And he would he would review viral videos. Like he was super uh, popular. Okay. He had like millions of subscribers. No, he did was review like three viral videos like every every day or every. But he days. had like he was working for like a media. Yeah. Company. Like they had great quality. Um. It was uh, one of the early YouTubers. I used to watch this dude named Peter Rallis. He used to do movie reviews. Mm. There was a dude, um, Philip DeFranco, who's still around. He's yeah. been doing it for like 12 years. He he started like around the time. He had a big following back then, too. Yeah. It's just been a bunch of when Joe Rogan started uploading like around that time, 2009, I think. Yeah. He would just do his podcast with his, his friends podcasts. getting high in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. It was just like random. And people would just watch because it was new. Yeah. There was no competition. There was no... The shit that we have today was like all polished and nice edited and all that shit. That wasn't there. It, it was wasn't just there. It was random just stuff. Random. Niga Higa. Niga Higa. That, that was fool the... had a huge channel. We would not be doing this podcast because we're a little too tired. Uh, so this podcast was fueled by Café del Corazón, also known as Amigos Coffee. We make great coffee, great lattes, great espessos. Um, anything to fuel your caffeine needs. Amigos Coffee.
Yeah, Amigos Coffee right here located at the Indie Food Park. Shout out to Indie Food Park. Definitely check it out. Like um, live shows, amazing. They have wings now. People don't even sleep on the indoor, bro. You bro. guys haven't been to a food park in a while. It's definitely dope. They have wings. They have hot dogs. They have fries. Oh, they got you, fries. You've been, you their, fries. You've been trying trying out their fries. Their fries are good. They have different sauces too with their wings and bro, wing their wing their sauces, bro, are top notch. I, I hey, they got the the secret menu stuff that you only get here. They got <laughs> the what do you call it? The sampler wing sample or the the, the wing, wing fly? Sam- wing fly. fly. Yeah, yeah. So you got a wing fly. It's a bunch of wings. And you get all the sauces. So yeah. you get to dip them in every sauce. And if it's your first time coming to the food park, then you get to try all the sauces. Write down what you like. Next time you come, you make your order just to those that, that style. Yeah. Definitely for, for a first timer. Perfect. Their wings are good. Honestly. Um, they also, like uh, like Angel said, they have pop-up shows as well. So uh, right now they're doing weekly events where Mondays there'll be karaoke, uh, karaoke night. Um, we should probably, we should probably do that sometime, <laughs> uh, but we should probably do that sometime. Um, I have karaoke nights, uh, Tuesdays. I think it's like, they have, uh, what is it? Like every day it's like a new day. It's like a, like eighties day. They have like a, another day where it's like reverse opposite gender day. Like where guys, where guys come dressing as, I guess people just cross dress or something like that what? <laughs> yeah like they that's what they were telling me is like they have an opposite opposite gender day i don't know um, oh they're gonna have that like here? yeah like something like that they have a disney day uh you come in like dressed as like a mickey mouse or you know any any disney character and i, I guess they give you like uh like a special or something like that um they have like shows here too um they have like a stage so it's open to any comedians any artists rappers musicians um anybody you know that's into show business whether if it's uh, poetry night too i think that's what they have uh, as well they have a bunch of stuff i mean they have shows here you could watch the game uh football games here um you know if you guys or paying attention to this podcast, and there might be a video game tournament here. But I'm just saying, just saying, just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it might be here. It's definitely a, a place to stay here. Here, Indie Food Park. Shout out to them, one of the sponsors for this uh, this podcast. Like I said, um, and we're just really grateful to have the opportunity to be filming here and making podcasts. You know, like it's just I don't know. It's cool. you were here since day one, bro. Like you got to see like all this stuff how how like <clears throat> you well one like the studio you building the studio with eric you know that's that's one thing but him like actually seeing how like everything was back then from like from then till now it's like what like what do you think about that well yeah so i've 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 been kind of involved i didn't even know how I got involved with Eric, but this dude somehow just like trusted me and he allowed the opportunity to start filming and doing all these things like at uh, these events. Once I met him because I, I did a yeah, vlog yeah. for him. That's yeah. why YouTube. So even if videos don't get millions of views or YouTube, whatever, or a podcast, like your yeah. podcast might only get 30 listens, but the connections that you get from these yeah. is just something it's so powerful. It's so powerful. All the people that you probably still in touch that we've had on the podcast, like Ricky. Ricky, the Ricky just series. texted me, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Ricky. Shout out to Ricky. And the opportunity is like I've I've had I've had the mayor of Coachella on the podcast. He led to interviewing Los Tucanes yeah. de Tijuana. You know, the things that you don't expect, the connections you make here. And even if it's 30 listeners, 20 listeners, even if 10 people listen, yeah, but yeah. you make that connection with that guest, it's just so much more powerful. That's why I love creating content and making videos. And that's what it led to Eric. So I met Eric. He invited me. He, I helped him make the promo so he could pitch the city of Indio, the food park. Okay. Filmed that. Filmed when he got the studio, he invited me. It was just me and him. I recorded inside when it was empty. Got a couple interviews. I yeah. saw the, the construction process when he was putting up the fans. Like when it was an outdoor thing, now it's indoor. When he remodeled inside. And you helped too with the tile. 
as well. Yeah, I helped him do tile in the in the pantry. He needed some stuff passed by the health department. I put tile there. We yeah. put tile in the coffee shop. Tile here in the studio. So it's like it's been a mutual. Of course, it's his thing, but um, I just have a little space in here. So that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty cool that that we're able to. Do you to like rent the spot? Do you like pay him a little bit, like just to yeah. have the spot? Well. I don't want to talk finances. <laughs> I want to talk about the details. No, I just no. I'm just I've just been curious. Like, do you? Yeah, we we have like a like a contract or and, something. And not a contract. No, not a not physical contract, but we have an agreement. Okay. So it's it's cool. Yeah, me and Eric are cool. We've uh, helped each other out. Um, yeah. I helped them get the ice machine too because we used oh, to really? we used to run the one stop shop. One stop shop. Oh yeah, my yeah. family had the one stop shop. So the ice machine that's here that used to be at the one stop shop. Oh, okay. Um, you know, help them with some stuff. Um, like I said, I just want to help. The help and he, that's what Eric's all about, helping the community. Yeah. So whatever ways I could help them, just it's mutual. So Definitely dope. That's pretty dope. So, yeah, just if you ever want to start social media podcasting, do it. Definitely do it because you never know what it's going to lead get you. Get your brand out there. Get your name out there. Yeah, it's uh, it's just an, it's just an amazing opportunity that we're in. And like I said, it's not about who's watching. Just keep doing it. Great it's not about it's not about the views it's about the connections you make like on and off the screen too because it's like you know even the conversations like i like the i like what you said what like your thought process about the podcast that like you know you have a podcast you have a conversation with somebody for like an hour yeah. hour 30 minutes hour two hours sometimes at most mm -hmm. um and it's like it's crazy like without being on your phone because like you know yeah. in today's age it's, it, it's crazy to say but you don't really have that because it's like every 10 minutes, you know, we're checking on our phones and stuff like that. Yeah, for and sure. I mean, you, you, you already touched on that topic and I'm not going to get on to that topic. <laughs> uh, it's true, though. It's we I would never like back to that fucking perfume movie that's still, <laughs> still on the screen right there. That perfume movie. I would probably never even have mentioned that the rest of my life, but because you brought it up somehow in this podcast. That movie came yeah. up. Yeah, shit like this would never happen if we were in fucking doing podcasts. It just and, happens. Yeah, and it's it's dope, and like it, it gets you excited because you're you're more you do one episode, then you're motivated you motivated to do another, another one. one. And there's some some shit that's trending. We like just came into this podcast <laughs> just trying to talk about what's going on with Messi, man. This all of a sudden this happened from like this. The, our podcasts are not planned. I mean, we have like bullet points. We know what we're trying to talk about. We have you know. We know what we're trying to talk about, but there's none of this is scripted or anything like that. It's just on the fly. Let's go record. Yeah. We just have a conversation. <laughs> now, um, I definitely, uh, Donda, Kanye West, Donda oh, yeah. live stream Donda. is happening right now. I didn't get to watch most of it, so I got to rewatch it. Probably watch it tonight. I might do a first reaction as soon as that's, uh, once I get the album, because the album that hasn't dropped. That's the reason I was taking my phone right now, like five, ten minutes ago. Yeah. It was supposed to drop. At nine, which is twelve o'clock our time, mm -hmm. twelve o'clock East time, nine p.m. our time, and he didn't drop it again. This motherfucker, bro. I told you, I know you. Don, he never drops shit on time, bro. I know. Well, I, bro, you could watch our last podcast. We predicted he was gonna, you know, he was gonna <laughs> be delaying this shit. Uh, I know. Yeah, Kanye, he always been doing that shit, but the whole timeline's behind Kanye, which is crazy. Because last year people were hating on this dude for supporting Trump, and now he's like he's he's back on everyone's graces, which is stupid. Like just appreciate the art, and um, I can't wait for the album. We'll do a first reaction, maybe in the next podcast we'll talk about it, or maybe I'll upload a video. But thank you guys for staying in uh, today's video, I'm talking about Messi and perfume, the story of a murder. <laughs> perfume. We were talking about. <laughs> We were talking crazy. about voice, uh, we're talking Neuralink. about her, Neuralink, <laughs> we're talking about, um, man, I just... See, if you had the Neuralink, you would remember it. Would every remember, fucking exactly. point. <laughs> you fucking did hey, bro, song. we're not sponsored by Neuralink, okay? We can't, we can't, <laughs> no, not yet, man, not yet. See, you just prove my point, we need the microchips in our brain <laughs> so we can remember everything that we... We talk about so man you get the chip i'm not i'll get the chip first all right thank you guys for watching make sure you guys like and subscribe if you're listening make sure you guys give us a review five star rating and all the good stuff share it with your friends i'll see you guys in the next episode see you later